Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the second lecture on decision trees and in this lecture we'll be looking at the decision tree learning algorithm. The same basic learning algorithm was discovered by many different people independently and um, here it is. It's a recursive algorithm, it's quite simple and um, this is a high level basic structure of the algorithm and we'll look at an example to understand this better. So first off we have growth tree of S. So growth tree of S is your procedure that is going to build this tree and S signifies the data instances that are passed as input to this growth tree function. And we have uh, first two statements, an F and an else if, and those two statements signify the stopping criterion where you don't want to grow the tree again in that particular branch. So here the criterion to stop is a simple criterion when your target variable that you are going to predict. So we all have seen that X denotes the features and Y denotes the target variable. So we are considering a very simple case where you have a binary target variable, zero or one prediction problem. And uh, here, if, if any of your subset of instances that are passed to a branch has all zeros or all ones, then it already is a perfect classification in that branch. And you don't want to split that further. So you want to stop growing the tree. So here we have two conditions. One is if y equal to zero for all x comma y belong to s, which has been passed down to this particular call of growth tree because it's recursive. See that you are going to pass other data uh, sets of data instances when you recursively call this function, right? So you have uh, for a combination of x and y um, that belong to this particular data instance, um, uh, set of data instances that were passed, if for all of them y is 0, then you return, you make that a leaf node, you don't split that further, and you make that a leaf node for with classification value equal to 0, because all y is 0 for this particular set of instances. And then you have another condition here for else if, where y equal to 1. So if you have multiple values of y, then you have uh, multiple different values here, uh, 0, 1, 2, so on, but we are considering a binary prediction problem, so we have only 0 and 1. So it's similar for 1, you'll see that uh, the condition is um, if, as if y equal to 1 for all data uh, instances in this particular set that, were, that was passed to this grow tree call, then you return a new leaf and you label it 1 now because y is equal to 1. Else, so this is the part where you actually grow the tree. So the, we discussed the stopping criterion first and now we are going to discuss how to go grow the tree. So we're going to, to present a high level idea here and then we'll look at an example. So first off, we want to choose the best attribute from a list of attributes that are available to us. Um, J denoting all the different attributes that are there and XJ is one particular attribute. You choose the best attribute to split. And when you, after you have chosen that attribute, let's say that attribute also is binary just for the sake of simplicity. So XJ can be zero or XJ can be one. So for all X, Y, all data instances in your set S, where xj value is 0, that goes now into the set s0. And for all, in all data instances where xj value is 1, that goes into your set s1. Right? So remember when we looked at uh, the basics of a decision tree, we had a left side and a right side. Right? So s0 is x one value of this attribute so it is let's say it's the left branch and s1 now corresponds to the right branch so when you are going to grow the tree further so that is what is the last statement in this procedure there you're going to make the recursive call where you want to find you have the new node of xj that you have picked to be the best attribute to split and then you've split the data into instances where xj's value is 0 or 1 and then you make two recursive calls here 
grow tree of S0 and grow tree of S1 to build the left and the right side respectively. So the right, the left side will have only data instances where xj is 0 and the right side will have only data instances where xj is 1. Right? And then this continues till you reach the stopping condition.